so time has come to cover a very important topic related to Kanban. It frustrates me, that's why I will try to clarify today what is the difference between Kanban board and Kanban system. Usually when somebody tells that they're doing Kanban, I tend to ask a couple of questions and quite often I find out that they're just doing Kanban board because they got some tool which has a Kanban or Kanban implementation by providing simple column uh, approach. Align your tasks into columns, that's Kanban. No, it's not Kanban, it's just a Kanban board. Luckily, I will show you an example how to transform your simple Kanban board into a true Kanban system. So let's get to it. What you have already on my screen is a simple Kanban board with not too many tasks, couple of people working on them, and maybe you can imagine or you already have a feeling what will happen when this small, even two people size team will grow a bit, let's say to five people, and they will be doing tasks on the daily basis. And let's say each week they will do at least from five to 10 tasks. It will become overloaded with cards. There will be hundreds of them. There will be aging items. There will be no longer important items. They will be unfinished items. There will be many items in progress. And this usually what happens. These are the core problems where people start frustrating with their work planning and they don't understand what is no lo what is more important no longer. And Kanban system can actually help you do that. So it's like with all the things, when we have too many stuff uh, on our, too much stuff on our plate, um, we try to systematically structure it. And Kanban system is very good at structuring things. So we'll start by the first first uh, feature of Kanban system, it's classes of service. And classes of service symbolize um, a specific value or loss of value of not doing the actual task. How much value do you lose by not doing a task? And they're categorized by this amount of loss of value or when it happens. So let's start with simple thing. I will introduce one first default class, which is called standard. So it means whenever we don't do task, it just slightly degrades. So we keep losing value, but in a linear manner. So the more, the more time we spend not doing it, the more value we might lose. And then there are two additional classes of service by default. Um, one is called fixed date. And it means the closer the deadline, the more value we lose. And when we reach the, the, the deadline, if we're not done, we lose a lot of value. And the last one is expedite. Uh, it's the most important one because the longer we don't do, the faster and more value we will lose. And it's really about significant loss of value. So for instance, if, if something's burning, literally, hope, I hope literally nothing's burning, but if, if there is a very urgent issue that you need to solve to your customer, the longer you don't do it, the more trust you will lose from customer. And that's right, that, that's, that's value loss, right? So I created uh, two more rows uh, in my Kanban board. And now it's becoming closer and closer step by step uh, towards uh, Kanban system. And now I can uh, categorize my cards by just simply moving them into the right uh, bucket. That's called bucket or row. In Kanban, those are actually called swim lanes. So yeah, that's a swim lane. Let's put them into correct swim lanes. Um, or everything with the deadline, of course, it should go into my um, fixed, uh, fixed date uh, row or swim lane. And now let's put the last one. So look, this is this is now a bit more structured board. And these things work magic when you have many items because you can create pretty powerful structures, not only in single dimension, like you might find in tools such as Trello, Monday and ClickUp, but a real Kanban system with the proper structure, even for bigger projects, bigger things. But let's move on. So now we know what are the swim lanes, what are the classes of service and what is the loss of value based on the specifics of work. Next thing, it's multitasking. So the more we multitask, the more inefficient we are because of interrupts. We need to switch over to new idea. We need to switch our mindset to something different and we lose information, we lose focus and we need to gain new focus and gain more information about our next task. 
That's why doing things in parallel is very unhealthy. And it is solved by Kanban systems by introducing work in progress limits. Work in progress limit tells you how many cards can be in the specific status at the same time. In here, I have, in my example, I have two people working on all the tasks. The ideal, the ideal work in progress limit will be two. And usually that's the right answer when someone says, oh, Vita, so what, what should be, you know, my work in progress limit? Well, start with one. <laughs> start with one. If it's not enough and you have more capacity, you will slightly increase. And there is this secret sauce which actually brings magic. The lower the limit, the higher the throughput. Simple. Maybe counterintuitive, but simple as that. So now we just introduced work in progress limits. And a true Kanban system will always prevent, like this, moving more work because it's against the rules. And your system should work on top of your policies. Every team should have some sort of policies, they should have a process defined. So tooling should support your process and be flexible enough to adapt to your policies. That's also a very important part of a Kanban system, a true Kanban system. Discussed work in progress limits, let's move on. Now, with work in progress limits, it, you might start feeling a bit of pain when you want to switch tasks or you need to move something in additionally and there's already a thing that you're working on and it's unfinished. Well, either you define the process differently and you have further steps which bring, val which, which bring your card closer to the finish line. Of course, valuable steps. Or you implement queuing mechanisms or you implement commitment points and don't allow moving things back because moving things back from work in progress to planning is, is actually painful. It's a waste. It means you started doing something, you didn't reach the value and you move it back to planning where it will take time from somebody else who needs to prioritize it again, figure out what's missing and move it back. All right, so that's the idea. If you can solve something on the go, like impediments, uh, blockers, you should do them. If you, you cannot, then you need to define the process how, how to act on such occasions. But I mentioned already a commitment point. Commitment point is another thing which works magic in Kanban systems. And what you usually see in, in standard tools is one horizontal group of columns um, in, in, in one single uh, hierarchy saying that this is your process. But processes have bigger steps and smaller steps. And my favorite grouping is to have first group, which is called input. It means we create new work in it and we do our planning there. We define priorities. Then second group is work in progress where um, actual work happens. And the third group, um, what I recommend, of course, is usually output. So this is uh, when we finish work, uh, oh, sorry, mistyped. So when we finish, uh, when we finish work and we put a lot of uh, tickets there, maybe we'll archive them later, but this is the main point. So what I do is I will quickly um, re rearrange my columns. So now they will resemble these so-called commitment points. And I will quickly switch um, to my board once I'm done editing. This is, uh, this is the editor mode. I will quickly have a glance how my board looks. This is how I want it. If I go back, it will have already changed in here as well. You see, there is a small gap. It's a visual cue, nothing, nothing special, but it already brings additional documentation point. If item from input goes into work in progress, this is the commitment point. We commit to finishing it and item can finish only in the review. When the item reaches review stage, somebody looks, maybe there is another person responsible for all the reviews. The person either pushes it back or moves it to the completion stage. So this is my commitment point, which tells me I should go through at least two steps in this specific status group, which is called work in progress. And these commitment points, they will eventually serve also benefits when you will start measuring some metrics about your flow, you will, you will start to identify how much time items or cards spend in specific process step or specific group of statuses. This is very important.
you might not want it in the in the in the very beginning but eventually you will be wishing you have this data so these are commitment points having covered that i will move on to one more um, trick this is actually very special to teamhood you won't find it in any other system it's not only commitment points which are significant it's also about level of detail when you commit something a good example could be so imagine you are working um, in, in a team with this process and when you do planning and when you do um, your new task creation you're not focusing into very uh, low detail you focus on sometimes even on abstract things what needs to be done what is the end value but you don't focus what should we do uh, to reach that value and to to actually make an example um, I have just created alternative status group I also called it work in progress and it has two additional columns and I will name them I, I will name them to do and done uh, maybe I will even create additional one which it will be, will be called like maybe this one is also in progress just bear with me wait for the whole magic to happen so now I have something different this status group has these darker swim lanes so it's like nested swim lane hmm let's see what happens with it I already have a task which is in here which is customer satisfaction campaign I will move it back actually I will move it into my new work input and I know that it has child items or subtasks one might call it if I turn them on you can hide or show subtasks I see that there are three um, checklist style things that I need to do to reach my customer satisfaction campaign I need to do copywriting design drafts and then pick the channels where we launch this campaign and this is like a higher level of detail in Teamhood, we're all about reducing cognitive load for complicated workflows and complex projects. That's why we have this expanding level of detail trick. Look what happens. If I move it to work in progress, these checklist items become standalone tasks. This is extremely powerful because I can continue assigning them as a standalone work items. I can add all the details as the whole you know main task has and this way I can visualize larger process or what is called upstream Kanban with a downstream Kanban I can have it nested inside not detached but nested and if you're doing planning you will just usually collapse it and you say okay I'm not interested what's happening in the in, in work in progress or if you're not interested what's happening in later stages you collapse everything and you look only in this particular stage so this is this is how you design a powerful Kanban system with all the additional visual cues and two-dimensional structure the last bit that remains are metrics and of course standard metrics like lead and cycle timing Kanban are very important in here I don't have many uh, data points yet but what you will be looking at usually is how much time does it take to complete on average your work items we also are uh, providing percentiles so you can choose what's the accuracy you want you will be interested to see um, I, if, if there is like a fixed uh, fixed date uh, swim lane you will be interested how much work do we complete on time actually again there are metrics for that you will be also interested how much time things spend aging in progress so aging in progress is is not cool because whenever you are working on the process if you're producing something that just being is being parked somewhere and not used there's no value why why do you doing those tasks and it's all about this queuing system I mentioned before if you finish something after work in progress let's imagine that there is your quality assurance step and then you don't have like active active stage right away but you have something ready for quality assurance once I finish all my child items in here I complete my tasks I say okay this this major item is now ready I just put it to ready because people will not start working on it right away to review because maybe I have someone else somebody else to do the review they will see that there is already um, item waiting and they will say if if my review takes significant amount of time I will move it to the stage and I will do the review 
And it is important because Kanban system is a pull system. You shouldn't be pushing things to other statuses. You should be placing them so people can take and work on those uh, important tasks. It's the same with your planning. When the pool system is working, people take work themselves. You, if you're a team manager or responsible for work uh, planning, you just make sure that there are right priorities, good documentation and enough work to do next. What are the next most important things to be done? Hope that clarifies what is the difference between Kanban board and Kanban system. If you want to learn more details, visit our website, watch our other videos. Mm -hmm.